Despite being less than a dozen people or so, the engineering team at Convex has been absolutely ripping through new features lately, up to the point where it's actually really quite hard to keep up with it all. So today I thought I would share a few of my favorite updates in rapid fire fashion, so you can get back to pushing your AI model around. All right, so first up, there's been a bunch of work lately to add a few more helper functions to the Convex validators. So before this latest update, which is v1.29, you had to manually redefine validators whenever you needed slight variations, like you can see here. Or a way that I often do it is I extract out common fields into an object that you then spread into other validators. Um, I've done this many times in, on various projects. But now I don't need to because we can reuse and transform these validators with these handy dandy pick and omit functions. And then there's also this new partial.partial .partial function that allows us to make a specific validator entirely optional. And you can use this dot extend to extend an existing validator without doing that spread trick. Very cool, super useful. But that's not all for validators. So previously you would have to manually write out the pagination result validator, something like this. Ugh, kind of ugly and annoying if you ask me. Well, now you don't need to because you can use this built-in paginating result validator helper. Much nicer. Oh, by the way, if you like this kind of update, Convex updates video, Convex news video, then don't forget to like and sub as it really helps me know what folks like and don't like. And also it means you'll get more of this kind of video in your feed. Well, one last thing from validators, we have this new dot nullable helper. So if you are like me and you have written this kind of thing frequently where your code you do a union to produce a nullable string. Well, you don't need to do it anymore because you can now use this dot nullable on a string and it's now a nullable string. So this is an interesting one. So previously uh, generated files in the slash convex underscore generated folder would be added with a dot td dot ts and a dot js file but now you can configure it so that you can either get it to generate uh, as, as it was before, or you can get it to generate with a .ts extension without those .js and .dts files. This is really nice for IDE tooling, um, and it keeps things nice and consistent with components, uh, which always used the .ts extension anyway. So this is what I wanted to cover, not just because I personally worked on it, but because I think it's actually really cool. Um, if you're using our React query library, you might have noticed a little annoyance where you had to pass in an empty object even if the function didn't actually require any args. And I knew there must be a way that this to remove this requirement because uh, our just regular React use query hook doesn't require it. Well, as of the next version of React query, convex React query, you no longer have to provide it, just like with use query. And the same goes for situations where you supply an arg that doesn't actually need to be there. So, um, for example, in this case here, we're providing something, but the function list doesn't take a something. So what this would do is it would, would create a runtime error in your validator because the function would run and it would say, ah, oh, you've provided something that doesn't need to be there. But TypeScript should catch us here. Previously, our React query implementation didn't uh, error here, but it now does. Much nicer. All right, so this one definitely deserves special mention because it was a long time coming and honestly more work than we expected. For those of you that weren't aware, Zod released version four um, a fair time ago, but only recently became stable. And it came with a bunch of pretty significant changes, but some awesome new features. The Convex team knew that we needed to update the, the helper support, but we thought it would be relatively straightforward, but it ended up turning into multiple PRs and this massive 180 commit monster that took weeks to get right. One of the main challenges that we wanted to support both Zod3 and Zod4 at the same time and give everybody a smooth migration path. And so this basically meant implementing everything twice, not to mention all the extra support that we needed around Zod's four schemas, etc. So what do we end up with? Well, first up, the helpers can now work with both Zod3 and Zod4 out of the box. If you're using Zod3, you can import from convex helpers slash server slash Zod3. And if you're using Zod4, you can import from convex helpers slash server slash Zod4. 
But the really cool new thing is Zod4 Codex. One really nice thing we can do with Codex is it allows us to convert from one type to another. So for example here, we have a codec that allows us to convert from an ISO date string and a, to a JavaScript date object and back again. Then in our convex code, we can use it like so. Notice here how the uh, date argument is automatically decoded into a JavaScript date object, which we can then work with as we normally would. And then when we return it, the codec automatically encodes it back into a string. Then on the front end, we can use that codec again to encode it back to a date. Super clean. I do want to just give a quick massive shout out to Karen Single and Nate Dunn, who were instrumental with helping with this uh, upgrade from Zod3 to Zod4. So thanks guys. All right, well, there you have it. Just a quick rapid fire tour through some of the latest convex that I think are the most important ones, but there's so much more that I didn't cover. Like I said, the team is absolutely ripping through new features at the moment, and it's just genuinely hard to keep up. So if there's anything I covered here today that you'd like me to dive into a bit deeper, then don't forget to drop me a comment down below. I love reading them, and I try and respond to most of them. Anyway, that's it for me for today. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.